Hi, in this video, I will be showing you how to use OpenAI's API to build an easy, fast API backend that is capable of holding a continuous conversation. First, you're going to want to go ahead and get your environment set up. We're going to be using VS Code and Python. And once you're ready, you're going to want to go ahead and create your virtual environment. To create your Python virtual environment, you're going to go ahead and type in this command. With ENV being the name of your virtual environment, you could change that if you want to. And then go ahead and hit enter, but we already have one created, so we're not gonna do that. Once your virtual environment is created, then we'll go ahead and activate it, if not already. We'll go ahead and run this command. Once you have this command typed out, go ahead and hit enter to activate your virtual environment. Once in your virtual environment, we're going to want to go ahead and install our dependencies. We're going to need FastAPI and OpenAI. And once you have this typed in, go ahead and hit enter. So the first thing that we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and create a separate folder for our chat interaction. This chat engine directory will contain some of the functions that we will be using in our fast API endpoints. And go ahead and create these two files here. Our init.py will just show that this folder is a Python package and the chat interaction.py will be our actual functions. Now inside of our chat interaction.py file, we're going to want to go ahead and import our OpenAI API. So go ahead and type in this line. And this will be the only import that we will need for now. Now that we have our import, we're going to go ahead and assign some variables here to get started. So our OpenAI API key variable is going to be where we use our API key. However, for this demo, I'm going to be using Olama. So I do not need an API key, but I do need to enter an Olama here. For this, you could also use VLLM. Instead of Olama, you'd simply type in empty. Now coming down to the base, this is going to be the URL of where we're hosting Olama. So I'll go ahead and use our local host. And again, for VLLM, you would use the same local host, but with the correct port that you have VLLM hosted on. And next, we'll create our OpenAI client. And once you have that done, then we'll go ahead and go to our class. And once you have this, we'll start with our init function. And now we'll create some of our global variables. So we'll start with our client. And we'll even assign the model here. In this example, we're going to be using Llama 3.2. And next, we'll go ahead and create a system prompt. This is where you could tell the LLM what their specific task is, whether they focus on data, coding, finances, or anything you really want. We're going to leave this general and generic and just say you are a helpful assistant. And next we're going to go ahead and create a list that's going to serve as the collection of the overall messages between the system and the user. And we'll actually initialize that with the system prompt. Now that we have these items initialized, we have what we need to go ahead and create our chat functions. Now what we're going to go ahead and do first is we're going to actually append our user message to our messages list before we run a response.
And next we'll go ahead and use OpenAI's chat completion. And from here, we could go ahead and declare a model. And then in this next part, we're gonna go ahead and send in our messages. And now that we have that, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and strip the message once we get a response back. There, and this line here should just give us a string back with what the LLM has responded with. And now we'll go ahead and append that into messages once more. There, and now we could go ahead and return our generated text. And once we actually run this function in our fast API endpoint, we'll actually get just the response back. And now we're gonna go ahead and create a little helper function where we can view the chat history and validate that our function is working. There, and that's the base of what we need. So now we'll go ahead and create some endpoints in FastAPI. If you haven't already, go ahead and make a main.py on the outside of your chat engine folder. And so we'll come in here and go ahead and do our imports. First, we'll start with FastAPI. And next, we'll go ahead and use the package that we created. And that's all we need for our imports. Next, we'll go ahead and initialize our FastAPI app. Next, we'll go ahead and assign our class to a variable. Now that we have these two items done, we'll go ahead and create our first endpoint. First, we'll create an endpoint that will take in a prompt from the user and then return a response. And that's all we will need for that endpoint. Next, we'll go ahead and create the endpoint where we could view the chat history. There, and that is all we need. Now we could go ahead and start our fast API server and test out these endpoints. To do so, we'll go ahead and type in fast API dev and then the name of your fast API application. You'll actually wanna make sure that you're in the correct directory. So I'll go ahead and correct this. Let's try that again. There we go. And you can see we're on localhost on port 8000. So we'll go ahead and pull that up now. And this is our application here, but there's nothing here. What we'll actually wanna do is go to the Swagger UI, simply type in slash docs. And here's the two endpoints we've created. You can see here we have view chat and we have our chat functions. So I'll go ahead and try a chat. Simply click try it out and type in a prompt. Go ahead and hit execute. And as you come down to the response body, you could see your reply. Now to validate that this is stored, we could go down to our view chat function here and go ahead and hit try it out and execute. In our expected response, we should see our question and the response and also the system prompt. I see there is an error, I forgot a slash. And let's try this again. After fixing the missing slash in our endpoint, we could go ahead and see our chat history and we could validate that there's actually storage happening here. Let's ask the chat to remember an item and then ask it later. Let's go ahead and say my name is Bob. And then you see we get our response. Now let's go ahead and ask an unrelated question. And it actually does use the name that I gave it here. As you can see here, it calls us Bob. Now, if we ask it again what my name is, it 
it does indeed remember. And with our chat being updated, let's go ahead and view the history. Here you could track our convo. Here you can see we started with a hello message. And then moving down, we could see we gave it our name. And then we asked the questions about the pyramids. And then we asked it what our name was again, and it replied with Bob. With that being said, you now have the basic knowledge of how to run a continuous chat with OpenAI's API using Olama, VLLM, and OpenAI.